feel the spark. Hit subscribe and stay charged for more. I saw this video of ants and termites on YouTube where they're actually living beside each other without fighting. Now, of course, I wanted to have battling uh, ants and termites in a game or something like that. That would be cool. But I had to learn about a bit more about neural networks and uh, genetic algorithms to be able to build it to what I was envisioning. I didn't build it entirely. I have learned a lot. My next project will probably have something more uh, in depth about this. But for now, this is what I've made. Um, enjoy. Very rare incident. Termites are on one side and ants are on the other side, while two lines of guards separate them. Both ants and termites typically exhibit territorial behavior and can be aggressive towards other colonies or species. But when there are enough resources, they don't need to compete. They may temporarily tolerate each other's presence. All the code for this is in the description below. Well, uh, let me start off by saying that I started plagiarizing a bit of the code from Daniel Schiffman, which you can see on the processing directory uh, for the app processing, and where I started learning how to code uh, about over a decade ago. Um, well, as much as I liked this, I wanted to expand it so that it had more and more creatures in it. So the blues are supposed to represent the termites, and the reds are supposed to represent the ants, and the greens were the food. And as you can see up the top, there's an average fitness level for either one of them. But this just ended very suddenly where the blues or the reds would initially win within the first 30 seconds and then it would be over with. Or I tried many different variations and it would just slow down my computer a lot, as you can kind of see here. So eventually I decided to go with breaking the, uh, using a quad tree and breaking everything up on the screen into sections and running them piece by piece. But still wasn't getting what I wanted. Um, I've recently spotted something else that I'm going to try in the future to get larger simulations. So as time went on, I decided that I wanted to have um, more control over the lifespan and the food rate, the mutation rate. Uh, so when they died or when they met a partner, they would create have a different evolutionary process. And uh, that's what I did then. So I can start the simulation and I had certain criteria. So ants were smaller, termites were larger. They would go and search for food and they would get a bonus if they actually returned the food but i didn't feel as though it was uh working the way that i wanted it to i thought i could improve it i did spend a lot of time on this part though and uh, yeah it was really cool i really liked the the line of sight but it wasn't evolving as much and i think i had a bit of a bug in my code so to improve things i decided to create a training session for each of the actual uh, uh, species uh, so that they could be a bit more organic. Now there seems to be like a, um, a phase of which every like few seconds they mentally thought about something and then they all moved almost uh, in unison. So this one did look good and I wanted to continue kind of a bit along this line. Let me see what we had next. So I had a lot of different iterations of this. So what I did here is I have the darker green circles are the plants and you still have food. And uh, then I decided to copy ants and start throwing in pheromones. So the red would be signaling warnings. Uh, then there was also uh, green for uh, going home and uh, a red is also danger. Yeah, so eventually I kind of got sick of the um, types of creatures and I thought, hey, it would be good if I could just hunt them down and kill all the ones that I didn't like and maybe I'd get a, a better response out of uh, the in, uh, the each variation or uh, each subsequent species. But um, they ended up shooting me a lot eventually. This one actually wasn't so bad now that I can see the video for it. But yeah, they, they were very accurate after their training session in killing me. So the game, it was a bit of a physics-based thing at this point. So I went back a little bit and I tried again with uh, creating more information, displaying it on the screen. I, I know I have other versions that I've actually put up uh, in my code that you can see in the GitHub. But uh, you can control the amount of food that was on the screen by the up and down arrows, uh, day and night cycles. I tried to throw that in, weather. 
and so on. Um, I played a lot with this in the last few days. Again, all the code is in the description in the GitHub link, and you can just take it and improve upon it yourselves and probably get something better than what I have here. Oh, um, at this point here, I decided I wanted to see the neural network. Now, I did many different versions of seeing the neural network. This one was the nicest one that I saw. So each one of the, the things on the left here is the inputs that are in the code. Uh, so describing the uh, distance to another piece of food, the distance to an ally, um, the, the, its health, its energy, its uh, reproduction rate, and uh, warnings and that kind of thing. And then the outputs are the directions and uh, the motions and speed in which it would take. So I thought it would be cool to see the weights um, for each one of the, um, between the, uh, each neuron and, uh, see if I could actually get a cool pattern going on, but it really lagged up my machine. Uh, you can also see around the outside here, I decided that I would create a warning system for the, um, the ants and termites because when they first started off, and this is actually before I did the training system, the uh, ants and termites would just like spread out in all different directions. And uh, yeah, I, I could kill them. That's actually one of the reasons why I created the player one where you could go in and start killing things, but I didn't add it into this specifically. And in this case here, you can see that I have uh, the food is yellow in the center. The color scheme is probably not the best here. Anywho, uh, the, I do zoom in so you can see it. So when it gets a red circle around the creatures, uh, the termites in this case, that's their warning. Hey, um, I'm going into a danger zone, but these guys were stupid enough that they just actually powered through the danger zone. So I had to figure out a way to kill them. And that made me swap over to creating the player version where you can fly around and shoot things. So I probably should merge all different kinds of code together but I don't have a, a proper trajectory, which I'm aiming for, which would actually, and I don't know how to figure out how to create that scene where the ants and termites were at the very beginning of this video. But um, there was a lot of interesting things for me to learn on this, and uh, a lot of it had to do with uh, using Quadtree and Tinker T. The Tinker T allows you to create this graph thing here quite nicely. Um, uh, so you have two different windows running at the same time in Python. Um, the running the neural networks using TensorFlow uh, rather than doing it in Python, multi-threading in different classes, and how difficult it gets to be after a while in trying to concentrate if you change one thing here and another thing here. So, for example, when you brought in the uh, creature in the first place with the neural network, that's cool. But if you want to train that neural network and then you want to change one thing, you're changing it in multiple different places simultaneously. Although, saying that, it was um, uh, a great project to work on. Uh, it's not a success. It was still great. I will definitely be going back to it again in the future. I'm going to see if I can get them to properly fight. And that would be fun for me. I just love this kind of thing. And I, I'm going to work more so on learning more about the neural network side of things first. But to start off from this, I, think, I don't think it was so bad. Anyway, thank you and see you again.